HarperCollins and Harper Audio present Warriors, The New Prophecy, Twilight, by Aaron Hunter, performed by McLeod Andrews. Prologue No! There must be some mistake! The cat looked up from where it crouched by the water's edge, its fur glowing in the moonlight. There is still so much I have to do. A broad-faced cat with blue-gray fur padded around the pool, her eyes soft with sympathy. I'm sorry, she meowed. I know you expected many more moons with your clanmates before coming to join us. The crouching cat looked down into the water. The moon's reflection trembled like a floating leaf and the surface of the pool glimmered with starlight cast by the countless shining shapes that lined the hollow. For a moment, the only sound was the waterfall that splashed down the steepest part of the rocks. The cats of Star Clan waited in watchful silence, as if each one shared the grief of the cat at the water's edge. You have served your clan more faithfully than some cats manage in a long lifetime, the blue-furred cat went on. It must seem very unfair that you should have to leave them. The crouching cat raised luminous eyes to face the starry warrior. Blue Star, I know this isn't your fault. There's no need to apologize. Blue Star twitched her tail. Of course there is. You should know how much your clan owes to you. All of the clans. A black and white tom with a long tail rose to his paws and padded around the edge of the pool to stand beside Blue Star. Star Clan, too. None of us would have found our new home without your help. He dipped his head in a gesture of respect, and the starlight on the surface of the pool wavered. The cat blinked at him. Thank you, Tall Star. I've made mistakes, but I have always tried to do what I believed to be right. StarClan asks no more from its warriors. A lean black tomcat began to pick his way over the moss-covered rocks. If we could change your fate, we would. But remember, Blue Star warned, not even StarClan can turn aside the paws of destiny, however much we might want to. The cat at the water's edge nodded. I understand, and I will try to have courage. Can you tell me when, Blue Star shook her head. No, even we cannot see the future so clearly. But when the time comes, you will know, and we will be waiting for you. A fourth warrior spirit rose from his place farther up the slope and padded down between the shimmering ranks of Star Clan. He was a light-colored tabby with a twisted jaw, Whenever the clans tell stories of the great journey, your name will be honored, he promised. Thank you, Crooked Star, the cat meowed. All four of the shining warriors gathered around. Four who had been clan leaders when their paws walked the earth. Know that the strength of Star Clan will be with you, Blue Star meowed. We will not leave you to face this alone. The cat looked up to meet the intense blue gaze. Star Clan has always been with me. You say that, even though your life has been so hard? Tallstar's voice was surprised. Of course. The cat's eyes glimmered in the starlight. I have made good friends in all the clans. I've seen kits born and watched elders leave on their final journey to Silverpelt. I've made the long journey to the clan's new home. Believe me, I wouldn't change a single day. The cat paused and looked down into the pool again. I know it is not in your power to give me longer with my clan, but I can't help wanting more. Blue Star's eyes narrowed. It hurts us all when a young cat is called to join Star Clan. I know you would have continued serving your clan loyally for many seasons more. Her voice rasped with pain, and the cat looked up at her, stretching out one paw in a comforting gesture. Don't grieve, Blue Star. 
I know my clan will be well cared for after I am gone. A murmur of respect rose up from around the hollow. Blue Star bent her head over the crouching cat, bathing the moonbright fur with her scent. We are with you, always, she mewed. In turn, each of the others bent over and added their scent, filling the air with the tang of stars and ice and the night wind. More warriors followed. A graceful tortoise shell, a sturdy bracken-colored tom, a tabby she-cat with a silver-striped pelt, breathing the cat with the strength and courage of Star Clan. Their voices swelled to a low keening of sorrow that drifted up to the stars. The shimmering forms began to fade one by one, until the hollow was empty, and the stars shone down on a single cat, who crouched unmoving beside the pool. Chapter One let all cats old enough to catch their own prey join here beneath the high ledge for a clan meeting. Squirrelflight woke with a start as the Thunder Clan leader's yowl rang out across the stone hollow. Cloudtail was already pushing his way out through the thorny branches that screened the warrior's den. His mate, Brightheart, uncurled herself from their mossy nest and followed him. What does Firestar want now? Dustpelt muttered pulling himself stiffly to his paws and shaking scraps of moss from his fur. With an irritated flick of his ears, he thrust his way into the open after his clanmates. Stretching her jaws in a yawn, Squirrelflight sat up and gave herself a quick grooming. Dustpelt's temper was even shorter than usual this morning. Squirrelflight could see from his awkward movements that the wound he'd received in the battle against Mudclaw was still painful. Most of the ThunderClan cats still bore the rebels' claw marks. Squirrelflight's side stung from a wound of her own, and she drew her tongue over it in rapid, soothing strokes. Mudclaw had been deputy of WindClan until the clans arrived in their new territory around the lake. The previous leader, Tallstar, had appointed one whisker to succeed him instead, just moments before he died. Furious, Mudclaw had led a rebellion against One Whisker before he had the chance to receive his nine lives from Star Clan. And Hawkfrost of River Clan had helped him. Squirrelflight felt a surge of anger as she remembered how Brambleclaw still insisted on trusting his half brother, even after he had seen that Hawkfrost was up to his ears in Mudclaw's treachery. Thanks, Star Clan, Squirrelflight thought, that Thunder Clan discovered the plot in time and joined the battle against Mudclaw and his supporters. Star Clan had proved who the true leader was when lightning struck a tree that fell on Mudclaw and killed him. Giving a last lick to her dark ginger fur, Squirrelflight slid through the branches and padded into the clearing, shivering in the cold air. The pale sun of Leaf Bear was just showing above the trees around the stone hollow where Thunder Clan had settled at the end of their long journey. Wind rattled in the bare branches, but down here all was still. The air smelled crisp. The frost still edged the grass and bushes with white. Yet Squirrelflight could pick up a faint hint of growing things that told her new leaf could not be far away. Digging her claws into the earth, she stretched luxuriously. Her father, Firestar, was seated on the high ledge outside his den, about halfway up the cliff. His flame-colored pelt gleamed in the slanting rays of sun, and his green eyes shone proudly as his gaze swept across his clan. Squirrelflight guessed he wouldn't look so confident if he needed to warn them about more trouble. The cats gathered in the clearing below him. Mousefur and Goldenflower emerged one after the other from the elder's den. Goldenflower was guiding blind Longtail behind her, the tip of her tail resting on his shoulder. Hi, Squirrelflight's sister, Leafpool, padded up and touched noses with her. How are those scratches? Do you want some more marigold? No, I'll be fine, thanks. Leafpool and her mentor, Cinderbelt, the ThunderClan medicine cat, had been busy ever since the battle, finding the right herbs and treating the cat's wounds. 
There are plenty of cats who need it more than I do, Squirrelflight added. Leafpool sniffed Squirrelflight's scratches and gave a nod of satisfaction. You're right, they're healing well. An excited squeal came from the nursery as Birchkit pelted out, tumbled over his own paws, and picked himself up in a scramble of light brown fur to take a place beside his father, Dustpelt. His mother, Ferncloud, padded after him and sat next to him, turning her head to smooth his ruffled fur. Squirrelfly let out a mrow of amusement. Her gaze drifted past them to the tunnel through the thorn barrier at the entrance to the camp. She felt the muscles in her shoulders tense. It looked like the dawn patrol had just returned. Brambleclaw was padding out of the tunnel, followed by Sandstorm and Rainwhisker. What's the matter? Leafpool asked. Squirrelflight suppressed a sigh. She and her sister were much closer than most littermates, and each one was always aware of what the other was feeling. It's Brambleclaw, she mewed reluctantly. I can't believe he's still friends with Hawkfrost after the way he supported Mudclaw. Many cats supported Mudclaw, Leafpool pointed out. They did it because they truly believed One Whisker wasn't the right cat to lead Wind Clan. After the tree fell, Hawkfrost admitted he was wrong and that Mudclaw had tricked him into helping. One Whisker has already forgiven him and all the other cats who fought against him. Squirrelflight lashed her tail. Hawkfrost lied. He was part of Mudclaw's plot all along. I heard what Mudclaw said before he died. Hawkfrost was trying to become powerful enough to take over RiverClan. Leafpool's troubled gaze seemed to pierce Squirrelflight's fur. You have no proof of that, Squirrelflight. Why should we believe Mudclaw over Hawkfrost? Are you sure you're not judging Hawkfrost because of who his father was? Squirrelflight opened her jaws for a swift retort, but there was nothing she could say. Remember, Tigerstar was Brambleclaw's father too, Leafpool went on. He may have been a murderous traitor, but that doesn't mean his sons have to follow his paw steps. I don't trust Hawkfrost any more than you do, but we can't assume he's as evil as his father without proof. And even if Hawkfrost is dangerous, it doesn't mean that Brambleclaw has to be like him or like Tigerstar. Squirrelflight twitched her tail uneasily. I guess you're right. The three tabby toms were tangled together like the tendrils in a bramble thicket, and she wondered if either of Tigerstar's sons could ever be free of their father's treacherous legacy. It's just, Brambleclaw won't listen to a word I say. He cares about Hawkfrost far more than he cares about me. I don't understand why he would take Hawkfrost's word over mine. Hawkfrost is his brother, Leafpool reminded her. Her amber gaze was warm and sympathetic. Don't you think you should judge Brambleclaw by what he does now, instead of what his father did, or what you're afraid he might do in the future? Do you think I'm being unfair? Squirrelflight asked. On the journey to the Sundrowned Place, where Star Clan sent them to learn about the danger threatening all the clans, she had trusted Brambleclaw with her life. Since she had witnessed his growing friendship with his half brother, Hawkfrost, she had felt her trust melt away like dew. I think you're upsetting yourself for no reason, Leafpool replied. I'm not upset. Squirrelflight couldn't bear to admit, even to her sister, the ache inside her when she thought of what she had lost. I'm worried about the clan, that's all. If Brambleclaw wants to go off with Hawkfrost, it's none of my concern, she growled. Leafpool rested the tip of her tail on her sister's shoulder. Don't pretend that you don't care, she meowed, especially not to me. Her voice was light, but her eyes were still serious. Hi, Squirrelflight. Ashford joined them before Squirrelflight could reply. The gray tomcat gestured to her with his tail. Come sit by me. Squirrelflight padded to his side, noticing that his dark blue eyes gleamed as she joined him. Leafpool followed and gave her ear a quick lick. Try not to worry, she murmured. Everything will be all right. She gave Ashford a friendly nod before padding over to sit with Cinderpelt beneath the high ledge. 
Out of the corner of her eye, Squirrelflight saw Brambleclaw take a few steps toward her. The uncertain look in his eyes darkened when she settled down next to Ashfur, and he veered abruptly away to sit beside Brackenfur and Sorreltail. Squirrelflight's fur tingled. She couldn't tell if it was from relief or disappointment. As Firestar began to speak, she stared straight ahead, feeling Brambleclaw's amber gaze burning into her fur. Cats of Thunderclan. Three sunrises have passed since the battle with Mudclaw, he mailed. Two dead warriors still lie outside our camp. Now that we have rested, they must be returned to Shadow Clan. A shiver passed through Scrollflight's pelt. She had discovered the stone hollow by falling into it when she and four other cats had first explored the forest. It was pure luck that the part of the cliff where she had slipped over had been too low for the fall to hurt her. But during the battle, two fleeing Shadow Clan cats had hurtled over the precipice at its highest point and broken their necks in the clearing below. Do you think Shadow Clan will want them? Cloudtail meowed. They were helping that traitor Mudclaw, after all. It's not for us to decide another clan's loyalty to its warriors, Firestar warned. Mudclaw was no ordinary traitor. Even cats from other clans believe he was the true leader of Wind Clan. Cloudtail twitched the tip of his tail, clearly dissatisfied, though Squirrelflight saw Brambleclaw nod as if he were thinking of Hawkfrost. The dead cats were Shadow Clan's warriors, Firestar went on, and their own clanmates will want to honor them on their journey to Star Clan. A patrol must take the bodies to the Shadow Clan border. I'll go, Thornclaw offered. Thank you, Firestar dipped his head. Brackenfur, will you go as well? And... He hesitated, his gaze traveling thoughtfully over his senior warriors. Squirrelflight realized this mission could be dangerous. Though only a few Shadow Clan cats had been involved in the battle, their leader, Blackstar, might blame Thunderclan for the deaths of his warriors and use it as an excuse to attack. Dustpelt and Cloudtail, Firestar decided. Take the bodies to the border by the dead tree, then find a Shadow Clan patrol and tell them what happened. But don't look for trouble. His gaze rested on Cloudtail for a moment, as if he were afraid the headstrong white warrior might say the wrong thing. If Shadow Clan seems hostile, get out of there fast. Thornclaw rose to his paws and beckoned the rest of the patrol with a sweep of his tail. Together they headed for the Thorn Tunnel. The bodies of the Shadow Clan warriors lay just outside, hidden in a dense patch of brambles where they had been protected from foxes and other carrion eaters. Firestar waited until the branches had stopped rustling behind the patrol before going on. Last night, one whisker should have traveled to the moon pool to receive his nine lives and his name. But his leadership won't be secure unless he is accepted by every one of his clanmates. I'm going to lead a patrol to Wind Clan to check. Surely that's Wind Clan's problem, Mousefur protested. Thunder Clan warriors have already had their fur ripped off once helping one whisker. Haven't we done enough? Squirrel flight though she felt a twinge in her wounded side, couldn't agree. But if we risk our lives for one whisker, she argued, why not make certain it was worth the effort? Mousefur shot a glare at her, but Firestar waved his tail to stop the quarrel before it went any further. Cinderpelt rose to her paws. Whoever leads this patrol, it won't be you, Firestar. You wrenched your shoulder in the battle, and you need to stay in the camp until it's healed. Firestar's neck fur bristled, then he relaxed and dipped his head to the medicine cat. Very well, Cinderpelt. I'll lead the patrol. That was Brambleclaw, springing to his paws. Thanks, Brambleclaw, mewed Firestar. You'd better not go on to Wind Clan territory, though. We must show that we respect their boundaries. Take the patrol along the border and see if you can spot any of their cats. Brambleclaw nodded. Don't worry, Firestar. I'll make sure no cat sets a paw over the border. Spiderleg, 
sitting on Ashfur's other side from squirrel flight, snorted. Bossy furball, he muttered. Who does he think he is, clan deputy? Rambleclaw is a good warrior, Ashfur mewed. There's nothing wrong with wanting to be deputy. Except that ThunderClan already has a deputy, Spiderleg pointed out. But Graystripe isn't here, Ashfur replied. And sooner or later, Firestar is going to have to decide how long he's prepared to wait for him. A sharp thorn of grief stabbed Squirrelflight. Two legs had captured the ThunderClan deputy just before the clan fled their old forest home. Squirrel Flight still remembered the shock of watching Graystripe being carried away inside the growling, mud-spattered two-leg monster. No cat knew what had happened to him, yet Firestar refused to believe he was dead, or to appoint another deputy in his place. Does Brambleclaw really want to be deputy? Squirrel Flight wondered. She couldn't help thinking, just like Tigerstar and remembering how far the murderous tabby had been prepared to go to achieve his ambition. Firestar called her name, dragging her back to the hollow. Squirrel Flight, you can go with Brambleclaw to Wind Clan. You too, Ashfur and Rain Whisker. Squirrel Flight pricked her ears. A run through the woods would blast away these troubling memories. Ashfur was on his paws already, his tail bolt upright. Let's go! Squirrel flight me out, bouncing over to Brambleclaw. Not yet, Brambleclaw replied crushingly, his gaze sweeping over her and Ashfur as if he hardly knew them. I want to hear the rest of the meeting. Glaring at him, Squirrel flight sat down again. We need hunting patrols too, meowed Firestar. Sandstorm, can you organize those? Of course. Sandstorm looked up from where she sat at the bottom of the cliff. But there's one thing I want to say before we end the meeting. She paused, and Firestar gestured with his tail for her to continue. ThunderClan has only one apprentice now. It's hard to get all the duties done. Sorreltail's brother, Sootfur, twitched his tail. Yes, I'm fed up with fetching moss for bedding. It's not a proper warrior's job, he complained. He hadn't been a warrior for long, and obviously had hoped he'd finished with apprentice duties forever, once Firestar had given him his new name. That's too bad, Firestar's voice was firm, as he stared at the young warrior. You can't expect one apprentice to do it all. Whitepaw works her paws off, put in Mousefur. She deserves a bit of help. Whitepaw, the only remaining apprentice, stuck her head and scuffled her forepaws. Squirrel Flight could see she hadn't expected praise from the wiry brown elder, whose tongue was as sharp as her claws. I'll help, Birch Kid bounced up excitedly. I'm old enough to be an apprentice. No, you're not, his mother, Fern Cloud, told him gently. Not for another moon. I'm afraid your mother's right, Birch Kid, meowed Firestar. But don't worry, your time will come, and there'll still be plenty for you to do. Sandstorm, will you sort out the duties in the meantime so no cat does more than their fair share? The ginger she-cat dipped her head in agreement. I will, and I'll make sure White Paw has enough time to train with her mentor as well. That's another thing, she added. With no apprentices to train, we aren't practicing our warrior skills as much as we used to. If there's another battle, we could have problems. There's not going to be another battle, spider legged me out. Mugclaw is dead, so where's the threat? Yeah, we've got enough to do, Sootfur muttered. And Mudclaw is the only cat who ever caused trouble? Mousefur asked scathingly, with a contemptuous twitch of her whiskers. When you've lived as long as I have, you'll know there's always some kind of threat. Exactly, Mousefur, Firestar mewed. The four clans are drawing apart again, and sooner or later we'll find that we have no choice but to fight. We need one cat to be responsible for keeping up our battle skills. Ashfur opened his jaws to volunteer, but before he could speak, Brambleclaw cut in. I can do that, Firestar. Squirrel Flight's fur prickled. The clan deputy would normally do this kind of job. It looked as if Brambleclaw really was trying to take Graystripe's place. Starting tomorrow, 
I can spar with two or three cats every morning, the tabby warrior went on. Ashfur, I'll start with you and Spiderleg. Ashfur's blue eyes narrowed. Claws sheathed? Rambleclaw's gaze met his. Claws sheathed, but that's all. We're not kits play fighting. Ashfur never said we were. Squirrelflight sprang up, her fur bristling along her spine. I'll fight with you and see if you think I'm playing. Rambleclaw blinked at her. I'm sure Ashfur doesn't need you to fight his battles, Squirrelflight. Why not let him speak for himself? Squirrelflight ignored Ashfur's tail laid warningly on her shoulder. She was too furious to remember she was in the middle of a clan meeting. You think you're so great, Brambleclaw? That's enough, Firestar lashed his tail. His green gaze scorched Squirrelflight's fur. Ashamed, she sat down again. Told you he's a bossy furball, Spiderleg whispered in her ear. Thank you, Brambleclaw, Firestar meowed. Make sure every cat has a chance to practice as soon as possible. His gaze traveled over the cats below him, as if he were taking in every claw mark and patch of missing fur, assessing how soon they'd be battle fit again. Brightheart stood up. There's a sheltered clearing not far from here, the ginger and white she-cat pointed with her tail. I was hunting there yesterday. The ground is flat and mossy, and it could be a good place to train, like the sandy hollow back in the forest. Sounds ideal, meowed Firestar. Show me after the meeting. Brambleclaw, don't forget to report to me as soon as you get back from WindClan. The tabby warrior gave a brisk nod. He turned to Squirrelflight. We can go now, if you're ready. Squirrelflight sprang up, her eyes narrowing. Don't tread on my tail, Brambleclaw. Then start behaving like a warrior, not a mouse-brained apprentice. Unless you think Firestar should have chosen another cat to lead this patrol. His voice was as cold as his eyes. Squirrelflight felt a sting of dislike run through her fur. This was not the same cat who had traveled with her and the others to the Sundrown place. He had been her closest friend on that journey, the cat who meant more to her than any of the others, and now she scarcely recognized him. Firestar can choose whichever cat he likes, she replied, spitting each word out like grit. You are one of his senior warriors, after all. But that's not what you really think. Brambleclaw flashed back at her. His amber eyes blazed and his ears were flattened in fury. You think I'm disloyal because I have kin in another clan. I saw you watching me when I was with Hawkfrost by the lake. It's a good thing I did, Squirrelflight retorted. Otherwise, no cat would know that Hawkfrost was plotting to become WindClan deputy and then take over RiverClan. I heard what Mudclaw said. Mudclaw was lying, Brambleclaw hissed his neck fur bristling with fury. Why should we believe that traitor? Why should we believe Hawkfrost? Squirrelflight clawed the ground in frustration. Why shouldn't we? Brambleclaw countered. Because Tigerstar was his father? Like he was my father too? That's not fair, Ashfur protested, coming to stand at Squirrelflight's shoulder. Squirrelflight didn't say, keep out of this. Brambleclaw rounded on the gray tomcat tail lashing. It's got nothing to do with you. Squirrelflight's claws slid out. She was within a heartbeat of slashing at Brambleclaw's muzzle. Then she saw Firestar heading out of the camp with Brightheart, and she thought how angry her father would be if his warriors started fighting among themselves. She dug her claws deep into the peaty soil instead. I don't care who his father was, she hissed. I don't trust Hawkfrost because he plotted to kill one whisker. He'll do anything for power. A blind hedgehog could see it. Brambleclaw glared at her for a heartbeat. You say that, yet you don't have any proof. Hawkfrost is my brother. I'm not going to turn my back on him when he hasn't done anything wrong. Fine, Squirrelflight exclaimed. You're so besotted with him. You wouldn't know the truth if it sat up and bit you. Why not join RiverClan, too, if it makes you happier? You obviously don't care about ThunderClan or me. 
Brambleclaw was about to spit back a retort when Birchkit lost his balance chasing his tail and stumbled between the tabby warrior's front paws. His eyes stretched wide as he noticed the two cats glaring at each other with bristling neck fur and twitching tails. Sorry, he squeaked and fled for the nursery. Brambleclaw took a pace back, his lip curled. Come on, we're wasting time. We won't reach Wind Clan before nightfall at this rate. Without waiting to see if the rest of the patrol was following him, he whipped around and stalked toward the entrance, his tail high. Squirrelflight exchanged a glance with Ashfur and saw concern and gentleness in his blue eyes. After Brambleclaw's hostility, it was like cool water on a hot day. Are you okay? he asked. I'm fine. Squirrelflat insisted, as she set off after Brambleclaw. She brushed past Rainwhisker, who was staring at her as if she'd sprouted rabbit ears. Hurry up, or we'll never catch him. Brambleclaw didn't wait for them, but plunged into the thorn tunnel without looking back. As he vanished among the trembling branches, Squirrelflight felt hollow inside. It was almost as if Brambleclaw was deliberately walking out of her life, would they ever be friends again? She couldn't see how, after a fight like that. She just had to accept that whatever they once had, the friendship that had lasted through their long journey, was over.